This is Eric Teitelman with the Jerusalem Connection Truth Report for this week, and today we're going to talk about the Sabbath. And I often get asked questions about the Sabbath, the Saturday, the Shabbat. Is, it the, is Sunday the new Sabbath? Is the church, do I as a Christian need to observe a Sabbath? And so we're going to talk about those two questions today. The first thing that we need to remember is that God sanctified the Sabbath at the time of creation. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 3, it says, Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Sanctified implies that God has set it apart. It is a special day, and it is different from all other days. The Lord then gave the Israelites the Sabbath as a gift, and he incorporated it into the Ten Commandments, what is called the Mosaic Covenant. I'm going to read it to you here, and it says, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God, and on it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord God made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. He blessed it and sanctified it and set it apart from all other days. The Jewish people have a very special relationship with the Sabbath, with the Shabbat, and it is akin to the relationship between a husband and a wife. It is a very loving and intimate relationship that we share with the Shabbat. It was given so that we might have a day to rest in the Lord. And it is also to remind us that one day soon we will enter into His eternal rest in Christ, that someday we will rest forever in the Lord Jesus. It was not given so that we could earn our salvation under the works of the law. Now we know that Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week, which is a, sa a Sunday. And so therefore Sunday is also a special day. It's called the day of the Lord's resurrection. It's also called the day of new beginnings or the day of a new creation. And it was observed during the Passover during the seven-day Feast of Unleavened Bread as the Feast of First Fruits, for Christ rose from the dead as the first fruits of those who have been resurrected to eternal life. But from Scripture, the Feast of First Fruits, first, first fruits is not called a Sabbath. So the answer to the first question is, is the Sunday a new Sabbath? And the answer is absolutely not. The Sabbath is its own special and unique day that God had sanctified at the time of creation and blessed it and made it holy. And Sunday is its own unique day in which we remember on Sundays when we gather together the day of the Lord's resurrection, the day of our new creation in Him, and the day of our new beginnings in Christ Jesus. The answer to the second question, should I as a Christian today observe a Sabbath, now, that is a contested issue, so I'm just going to say a few things on that. The first thing is, if we observe a Sabbath, we need to do it out of reverence for the Lord, that we need to take it as a day to rest in Him. That is what He gave it to us for. But we also need to accept God's sovereignty. We need to believe that He gave us this day because we need a day to rest. In other words, when God gave us a commandment. It was for our benefit. It was not for our detriment. And so if we believe that all that God has and does for us is good, then we know that His law is good. And He knows that we need a day to rest, and especially a day to rest in Him. And lastly, we must never observe the Sabbath out of any legal commitment to try to fulfill the law as a means of salvation. So in coming under the bond of the new covenant and remembering the Sabbath together, the Gentiles join Israel as one people of God and one new man. For it even says in Isaiah chapter 56, verses 6 through 8, it says, The sons of the foreigner who join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord, to be his servants, everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and holds fast my covenant, even them I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer.
For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, and that's the truth.